Good afternoon, and uh, again, my name is Warren Nichols, and I have the uh, pleasure of serving as the Vice Chancellor for Community Colleges in Tennessee. It's a uh, thought I might, for those of you that uh, might need a little bit of information, a uh, little bit about who we are and what we do in Tennessee. There are two public university systems in Tennessee. There's the uh, Tennessee Board of Regents, which is the sixth largest uh, system in the United States, and it's comprised of more than 200,000 students. It has six universities, 13 community colleges, and 27 colleges of applied technology. Then there's the other smaller system, uh, which is orange, called the University of Tennessee system. So that's, the, that's our two, uh, two systems. I have the privilege of working under the Tennessee Board of Regents system. It's uh, operated by a, uh, by a uh, appointed board from the governor's office and uh, run by our uh, chancellor, John Morgan. We are very, very, very fortunate in Tennessee to have a uh, progressive governors and progressive legislators who have worked tirelessly since I actually came on board with the uh, uh, the system in 2003. What we have done in Tennessee, and I say we because it's a collective, but I take absolutely no credit for it. Uh, it's our legislators and our governor that have done this. But what they have done is they have done some things under the Complete College Tennessee Act of 2010 that has totally changed the way we do higher education in our state. Without going into any significant detail, just a few of the things that that our governor and legislators did in Complete College Tennessee Act was created the very first, very first funding for our uh, universities and higher education where it is, funding is not based upon the number of students enrolled in classes. Our funding is based upon successful outcomes. In other words, it's not how many start, it's how many finish. We are 100% of our state higher education funding is now based upon how many students complete courses. Now, challenges are there, but I will tell you, having worked within higher education and community colleges uh, in several states now since uh, uh, 1983, the dynamics that our faculty are now employing on working with students, it's no longer you know, we've never appreciated it, but it's no longer that look to your left, look to your right, because, you know, two-thirds of you aren't going to be here at the end of the term. Now, it's all about every faculty member, every staff, every administrator, our sole goal is to find out what that student is looking for and what can we do to make sure that student is successful. We do not give up academic quality. We don't sacrifice academic integrity. We don't give grades. Students earn what they get. But at the end of the day, it is our job in higher education to make sure the students are successful and get what they came to do. And this is what the Complete College Tennessee Act has helped us uh, create. Other programs in our state are something called the Drive to 55, which our governor and our legislators have, uh, have seen happen. Basically, in a nutshell, this simply means that in our state, in order for us to achieve the goals for our state that we believe are important, we need a minimum of 55 percent of, of our Tennesseans to have either a certificate or a degree so that they can help us fulfill the business and industry needs of our workforce by the year 2025. We also have, in conjunction with this, something called the Tennessee Promise. Again, based upon the wisdom, the creativity, the ingenuity, and frankly, frankly, the, the, the guts uh, for our governor in the state of the state address to, uh, uh, to propose, and our legislators have uh, agreed, and it's been passed. Tennessee now will be uh, beginning in the fall of 2015. Tennessee will be the only state that offers free community college and free technology college to every student who graduates from a Tennessee high school. 
Now, that is, all, many of our states have last dollar scholarships. Many of ours have some sporadic where it works for one county or two counties or half a state. This, we have our state, our legislators, our governor has promised, has promoted that, that uh, ability to pay, especially for that first generation student who never ever thought it would be possible for them to go to college can now rest assured. You graduate from a high school in Tennessee, you are guaranteed that you can go to the technology college or the community college free of charge, tuition and fees free. It gets better if a student completes the two years of college at the community college, our, again, under the Complete College Tennessee Act of 2010, our governor and legislators mandated, mandated by law that any student who, trans, who graduates with a two-year college degree, those credits will, will transfer to one of our public universities, whether that's in the University of Tennessee system or the Tennessee Board of Regents system, or many of our private institutions as well. You will transfer every one of your college transcripts and you will start as a junior at that university. And then under the Hope Lottery Scholarship, if you've performed well, your grade point average, you actually will receive up to $5,000 to help with tuition and fees in your junior and senior year. So I applaud our governor and I applaud our legislators for everything that they have done to make sure and to enrich the higher education business and industry and the workforce are all working together. Kind of like that commercial, but there's more. What else are they doing? We, they recently, a year ago, our legislators and our governor passed something called LEAP, which is Labor Education Alignment Program. Basically, that is bringing our Department of Labor, our Commissioners of, of Economic Development, our higher education and all of the all of the players together to identify incentives and they have put some funding behind it to help our counties and our cities our businesses and industries and our uh, our higher education to match what skills are necessary and needed for a particular geographic region what are businesses and industries calling for what are the skills and gaps that are needed and then what can higher education do to bring them together. And then this allows training of the incumbent workforce, of, of people who have been laid off, out of a job, needing retraining, to be able to come to higher education, receive that training, so that business and industries and our workforce can, can, uh, can con continue under that drive to 55. So <clears throat> I've, I've spoken about the Complete College Tennessee Act. The only reason I bring that up is it's so terribly or terribly important to understand just exactly what our state uh, uh, has done and what they are doing as a progressive state in order to make sure that higher education, business, and industries are working well together. Then again, aligning supply with demand. Uh, what we did is we have found that in our state, again, we have the uh, uh, we're fortunate as a system, we have six universities, 13 community colleges, and 27 technology colleges all in one system, which means there's an alignment of programs, which means it's not us against them. Well, there's a little of that, but there's, there's, there's pride. But at the end of the day, students can start wherever they need to start, whether it's at plumbers, welders, auto mechanics, or whether it's uh, at nurses, uh, uh, paralegals, police officers, firefighters, and we can help move you up that uh, uh, higher education train as far as you or your profession demands or requires. We created something in, in uh, Middle Tennessee, uh, Nashville area, uh, with the support of the uh, uh, Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce, the local workforce investment boards, the Chambers of Commerce, and some others, on something called the Workforce uh, alliance. It's, frankly, it's based somewhat after the Washington State model, where you bring businesses and industries to the table to help us uh, identify our needs. What this traffic pattern basically shows 
is that unlike in years past, we now are a commuter state and a commuter nation. Uh, just because you live in one city doesn't mean that you work in that city. Uh, the chances are that you're going to be driving and commuting and going from one place to another. What has happened with our community colleges over the late, uh, years? Our community colleges have been in existence now in Tennessee 45 to 50 years. We have done exactly what we were asked to do. Each community college was placed in a geographic area to serve the local needs of that community. And we did a very good job of that. I believe we've done a very good job of catering and paying attention to the local needs of our community. Problem is, what happens when the local needs of this community served by a community college and the local needs of this community served by a community college have, have similar needs, but my college doesn't offer that program. So you're kind of stuck in limbo. Well, we've changed that whole dynamic now where we have recognized that nurses, manufacturing, computers, everyone needs them, but needs them to a different uh, amount. But at the same time, we need to make very, very sure that we are providing the, the skills necessary that workforce demands, that businesses are telling us they need. But we need to make sure we do that in a way where we're not duplicating effort and wasting taxpayers' money. So collaboration to design a strategy. We, we uh, have gotten three groups, advanced manufacturers, information technology, and allied health faculty uh, professionals, business professionals, to come together with our faculty to develop model statewide curriculum. And I, I think this is the key component of, the, of my thrust of the conversation this morning, is the fact that in the past, each of our community colleges, working with the local business needs, developed curriculum, but they were not necessarily the same curriculum statewide, even though our businesses and industries, like 3M, UPS, have, uh, have needs and they need all of, their, all of their employees taught and instructed in the same outcomes, we weren't necessarily doing that. But through this process, we've been able to design of getting the, the business and industries in our three areas, these areas specifically, to work with our faculty to come up with state curriculum that is the exact same curriculum offered throughout the state at all of our 13 colleges to all 94,000 all 94, plus of our community college students. A few things about what our skills panels do, but again, simply, it's like large advisory boards where they come together with our faculty, with the Department of Labor, Workforce Investment Boards. We all get around the table and say, we need this many of this. What are you going to do to get us there? And, and but while you're doing it, let's make sure that they have these particular skills and gaps. We are building our curriculum where they are, we're building in certificates, industry certificates, stackable credentials. We're building them so that somebody can take them from the lowest level of a technology college, then to a community college, all the way up to a master's degree at a university, if that's what that particular industry profession is looking for. Here's where we have been in the past, just as a quick example. You have uh, computer information technology offered at all 13 of our community colleges. But because each of these colleges was allowed and expected to grow it differently, we didn't even call computer information technology one the same thing across the 13. We didn't even have the same objectives or outcomes across all 13. Everybody just taught whatever their particular faculty decided they wanted it to look like. So just for a two-year degree program, we, could, we, have, we are offering over 400 courses just in a two-year degree program. If you look on the other side, after we brought our faculty that teach this program together, for the very first time in the Tennessee history, we actually invited all the faculty that teach the same program together so that they could have a conversation about what they teach. What we were successful in doing is getting these faculty to agree there are certain courses 
that irrespective of your geographical area should be the same. There are some basic fundamental courses that need to be done. We reduce that to one degree, seven concentrations, whether it's like web technology or, or whatnot, and we reduce that to over 100 courses instead of the 400. Paramedic certificate. We have 13 colleges teaching EMT paramedic, which is a, at the end of it, it's a prescribed curriculum based upon Department of Health criteria. You would think that if you have prescribed curriculum by the state and a licensing exam at the end of it, that everybody would kind of teach the same stuff. It was not what was happening in our state. So what we did, we brought the faculty together and said, here's what we're doing. We were able to make that where before, if you went to one college, that, that whole curriculum, before you could take the test, might be 32 hours. At yours, it could be up to 50 hours. Same, same end goal, different way of getting there. So what we've done is we've combined, we've changed it to all of the certificate programs are now 43 semester credit hours with common course titles, descriptions, and semester credit hours so that it's a standardized state curriculum throughout our state. So how are we doing thus far out of our office, and this is part of what, what my office is responsible for doing, we have working with our faculty and working with businesses and industries to tell us what they need from these, from these degrees and courses. We have completed two-year degree programs in business management, medical informatics, search tech, early childhood education, and paramedic. We are currently working with faculty and businesses and industries across our state on these particular programs. And the next year, this is what's on our plate, advanced manufacturing, uh, integrated industrial tech, engineering, mechatronics, allied health programs, and other concentrations. And, uh, uh, we're, we're taking the most popular first, and then we'll move into some of those that are a little bit more esoteric. Can't, can't, uh, can't leave without bragging a little bit about uh, one other thing that the, uh, the state has allowed us to do under the Unified Community College System, which was created under that Complete College Tennessee Act of 2010. We have started a statewide marketing campaign the intent is to make sure that people know that college is for everyone. It just may not be the same type of college for everyone, but college is for everyone. And under our state, with the fact that you can go to a community college for free, once you complete that college, you can then go on to the university with all of your hours guaranteed to transfer into your major so that you go two years at the community college, you start as a junior at the university, the state helps subsidize that up to $5,000 per year for your junior and senior year. So why would you not start where the classes are smallest, where the faculty are most ingrained in working directly with your students? and where the students who are not interested in university bound, but are wanting to go directly into the workforce, community colleges are the place to be. How will, and then we have our measurements of how will we know when we have done what we're supposed to be doing. So we do have some measurements of success. And then certainly I will entertain any questions a little bit later on in the program. So thank you for allowing me this time with you. Thank you.